And if you're joining us right now, we're getting our third conversation for this morning started. And we're shifting gears from politics and now we're talking about animals. <laughs> we're talking about the Belize Zoo and their upcoming fundraiser. And joining us for this discussion this morning, we've got Celso Poot, who is the operations manager from the zoo. Uh, good morning, Celso. Hi, good morning, Marlene and Gavin. Good morning. All right. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Now, uh, let's start off our conversation by talking a little bit about how things are at the zoo right now. Of course, this is one of our, you know, most beloved, let's call it national treasures. So yeah, how, how are things at the zoo? It is, it is a natural, a national natural treasure. Um, yep. The things are very slow at the zoo right now for us. Um, Finance-wise, um, the, the, the economy slowdown has really hurt the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center. Uh, we're not getting the visitation that we used to get or we used to for operations. And so the management and staff uh, had to become innovative in how we can try and raise the needed resources, financial resources to help with operating, yeah. basically caring for the animals. I know we did we did a story I remember looking at the at the cost of what it takes to manage um, just the food schedule for these animals and it is a lot of money that you need to find is how how are you sustaining yourself at the moment well at the moment we are open to the public um, on Friday Saturday and Sunday mm -hmm. and on Monday to Thursdays we're open by appointment only so we're getting a little bit of uh, funds trickling in through the gate entrance. Mm -hmm. We've relied mostly on donation from the public, both locally here in Belize and internationally from our friends uh, abroad. Mm -hmm. um, different sectors of the society has really stepped in to help us at the Belize Zoo with caring and providing for the animals in, in our care. Uh, we have a specific set of tour guides in Belize City who have been helping us out uh, since the almost since the start of the pandemic on a weekly basis, and so that's how we've been surviving. So on donation, on goodwill from the people of Belize, and also the supporters from abroad. Yeah. And of course, now you are branching out into more projects and uh, fundraising initiatives, and let's talk about uh, the upcoming one. So we, we have two, we, we want to capitalize on Valentine's and those people who really want to give um, with meaning, giving to conservation cars at the zoo is something you can do. The first uh, event we're having is, is just a general raffle for Valentine's and we're raffling a free entrance with lunch on the tapir deck in the zoo. So we have this elevated platform that overlook the tapir enclosure and that's where we usually host our VIP donors. And um, so we're offering that to the public for $5 a chance. Uh, we're having the raffle on uh, next week, Friday. Okay. Um, tickets are available at the zoo. They can be purchased uh, on our opening hours, which is from 9 to 4 on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. But we also have two ticket out, uh, three ticket outlets. We have uh, LG Pharmacy in Camalote. We have the Pets Place Veterinary Clinic in San Ignacio. And also the Quokers Restaurant and Wine Bar in Belmopan. So we have those three ticket outlets uh, for, for uh, where people can get tickets uh, rather than coming out to the zoo. So tell us about that view from the tapir deck. If it was exclusive to the VIP, it means you get a, a great view of the animals. Yes, actually, we, we've hosted a wedding up there before. Um, oh, wow. we, we had a couple who really uh, got married tied in that, on, on that deck, and uh -huh. they wanted tapirs to be their witnesses. So it's something <laughs> cool. It's a nice experience, and so we're offering that to the Belizean public. $5 a raffle, and then you win that exclusive meal on the tapir deck at the Belize Zoo. Now, your other one, I think, is really interesting. So, it is a overnight stay. Um, tell us all about it. It's a Valentine special. 
Right. So I think a lot of Belizean don't know that the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center also have accommodations where you can spend the night and experience the zoo at night. And we host a lot of school groups. And so what we're doing is we're offering Belizean the opportunity to come and spend the night at the Tropical Education Center and then experience the Belize Zoo at night. Apart from that, we're offering a guided tour by the zookeepers during the day. So on Sunday, you wake up and you'll get a morning tour of the zoo. And you also have access to the trails on the Tropical Education Center. And we also have a pool over there. But I don't know how the pool will fare off in this cold weather right now. <laughs> <laughs> but you got a bottle of wine to warm you up, right? Didn't yeah. I read that? And we also have, yes, we have we have a bottle of wine in your room for you. And then we have um, dinner and breakfast included in, in the dining room here, there at the Tropical Education Center. Uh -huh. Awesome. Oh, it's, it's a fully loaded package. Yeah. Now, what's the yeah. difference between spending the night at the zoo um, versus what we would see during the day? I'm sure the animals are, you know, people are always different after dark, you know. <laughs> well, that's the cool thing about uh, the Belize Zoo at night experience. Yeah. Most, most of the animals in the zoo are nocturnal. Uh -huh. And so you will see them uh, doing their natural behavior. And, and so the jaguars, the night walker, the, the margay, those are the more um, nocturnal critters, the tapir as well. So you go to the zoo during the day, you will see them. Sometimes you might uh, find them just resting. Mm -hmm. If you go in the night, you'll find them a lot more active. Yeah. Oh, I can imagine the sounds at oh, night yeah. as well. <laughs> Now we're looking at images of, uh, I guess, preparing food for the animals. <clears throat> Out of curiosity, Celso, who is the most expensive eater? Well, the meat eaters, the jaguars, they, they are the ones that really cost. And uh, we have quite a few jaguars at the zoo because we have a program where we work with the government and we identify these problem jaguars that we call or the, those jaguars that are causing human wildlife conflict. Mm -hmm. And when we deem these cats uh, are problem animals, we remove them so that we don't have to kill them. And so we have quite a few of those cats in the zoo. Those are not um, visible to the public. They eat a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not just food, it's veterinary care. It's the, the, um, the, the management that animal animal management husbandry that goes into the care for these animals that really cost as well yeah, yeah. and you know apart from you know the, the big meters or maybe even including them uh just for our viewers you can give an idea of you know what the task is like the maintenance task is for all of the animals maybe you can give an idea of how many different types of animals that we're, we're talking about when you're talking about feeding and veterinary care for at the zoo so we have about 45 different species of native animals. So only the animals you find in the Belize, you'll find in the Belize Zoo. Mm -hmm. And that is about close to 200 individual animals. Okay. Um, for example, the tapir. The tapir eat probably about 50 pounds of food for the day. What? But all yeah. fruit and vegetables? Fruits and vegetables and bros. And what happens is the tapir have a habit that they like to poop in their water. <laughs> that means that you need somebody there on a regular basis to clean out those water oh my uh, gosh it's a lot of poop to clean out and it's it's, it's a lot of work to do as well i, I don't want to i don't want to imagine how much comes out if 50 pounds goes in <laughs> but and people are having breakfast so let's move on but my point is um you know that it sounds like you have your your own daycare going basically it's a lot of care um, that goes in from even the food prep because maybe people don't realize you need a, a, a team to prepare the food for the animals. Yes, we, we have an animal management department of 11 staff members mm -hmm. and they are the, the team responsible for the care of the animals. So um, uh, it's, it's a lot. We have the mammals department, we have the birds department, there's just a group for the cats, for the jaguars. 
There's also, um, we, we have the, the monkeys, so they fall under the mammals. It's, it's a team effort. Mm -hmm. It's a team effort. It, it's not just going into the zoo and feeding the animals. It, it's going into the zoo and, and taking care of your animals. So every day the zookeepers, they go in, they have to observe their animals to make sure that they're not exhibiting any kind of Ill, Ill, Ill behavior so that there's no sickness, they're healthy, they're eating well, yeah. there's no loss of appetite, they're, they're not exhibiting any pain. So it's not just feeding the animals, it goes beyond that. Oh, and I would imagine there's, you know, upkeeping the grounds is also uh, a pretty big task given how much space you have, uh, how much pathways and, and you know, just maintaining uh just the natural the environment that animals live in as well that's right Gavin. we have more than one mile of pathway paved in the zoo wow. and uh, sadly that's one of the part that has been hit the hardest because we had to prioritize where we're going to invest the resources the little resources we have and so our maintenance department is down to like three persons um, wow. it was it used to be seven and, and so we had to reduce staff with, uh, like I said, we had to prioritize where we want the resources. So the, the upkeep is, is a big challenge for us. And um, volunteering is always welcome. You know, people can go in and, and, and sign up to volunteer and help us in maintaining the pathways, maintaining the exhibits, and also maintaining the barriers because the barriers are very important to keep people away from the animals because as much as you have signs, People always try to <laughs> to get like 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 the EG say get funny and and, and and try um get cute and, and and try to touch the animal or pet the animal and so we we need the barriers in place and yeah. it's costly to maintain them. Yeah. You know, so hearing all that you're saying, you know, it's almost a, a year. Um, since we've been facing issues with the pandemic, I know you've had other fundraisers as well. And you've also had some, some community support. Um, if people definitely should consider the overnight stay um, and purchase raffles, but what are some of the other ways that people can help? Well, again, the donation um, with, with the pandemic, we do our best to try and keep people away from the animals. So we, even with our own staff, a lot of people want to volunteer, but they want to go and, and, and cuddle. They want to go and pet the animals. And that's not what we're about at the zoo. Uh, we, we do our best right now to, to keep the general public from direct contact with the animals. So if people want to help, we, we appreciate in-kind donation. Um, we have people who continuously donate. Some people donate a sheep, a pig. Uh, some people donate vegetables. We, we have some real kind people who just passing the zoo, and because they're passing the zoo, they would drop off a box of vegetables. Mm -hmm. And, and that, those are the things that really have been helping us during this pandemic. Right. And so of course, you know, I know it's hard to come by cash, but there are some things that we can't get from volunteers, and cash will definitely help. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking now that your jaguars who eat lots of meat. Your tapirs that eat 50 pounds of food a day. What are some of the other ones? Tell us, tell us uh, the stories of these unique animals that you have there and their unique needs as well. Well, we, we have, um, let, let me tell you some of the food items that these animals consume because um, we have some generalists in the zoo, so I don't want to be specific, but uh -huh. we, we, in the fruits area, uh, papaya, Watermelon. Mm -hmm. um, we we do we do pumpkins. Uh, I can't volunteer to do that on the screen. <laughs> that's so. Cute. What is that? An ant eater, or is it baby yes, tapir? Yes, that's the baby ant eater. Um, we we had a naming competition recently. Um, I yeah. know. Archie. Yeah. Archie. Archie. Is, Archie looks is, uh, cute till I see those nails. Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> it's growing. Yeah. It's growing. Sorry, uh, go also, ahead. Something else, something else to mention that during the pandemic, we also had a couple animals that we, we had to rescue, we had to take in. So one of them is Archie. The other one is the baby ocelot Fifi. Um, and it's, it costs, for example, 
we've never had an ant eater at the zoo in, in, in more than a decade. And so we need to, to find a place for this uh, ant eater, Archie. Mm -hmm. We also need to find a place for Fifi, the, the, the ocelot that was rescued um, mm -hmm. during the floods in November. Uh, and uh, we, we don't have the resources right now, so we're doing our best to, to find it uh, alternatively uh, to build, for example, the ocelot. We need we need the resources to build an exhibit for it, mm -hmm. to introduce it to the two older ocelots that are at the zoo so that they can become one, one family. Yeah. And I'm also thinking, you know, just in terms of uh, maintaining an upkeep for animals. You also have um, animals in big groups, and I'm thinking about like, how, what does it take to feed a whole flock of pikeries? Pikeries, <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, the pikeries, the howler monkeys, the yep. spider monkeys, they all live in group, and, and it's, it's a lot. Um, the parrots, we have a lot of seeds for the parrots. Um, so it's a wide variety of foods um, that, that we can accept from volunteers. Well, you know, I, I, I can't imagine the struggles that you guys have faced over the past year trying to ensure that these animals are, are fed and maintained and kept healthy. Um, clearly, you've been able to do it, and we do hope that people, are here, people hear this conversation today and uh, consider ways that they can support as well. So let's go through the um, raffle. So that's $5 a ticket. Um, and the drawing is next Friday, so people have just about a week to be able to purchase those tickets. Tell us more. And they can, I mean, we're drawing it before Valentine's, so they can take their loved one out to the zoo for a very special romantic lunch mm -hmm. on the tapir deck. Uh, tickets are available at the zoo entrance um, Friday to Sunday from 4 to 9 when we're open. And purchasing a ticket does not mean a free entrance to the zoo because we get some people <laughs> show up and they want to buy a ticket and say, oh, we had a free entrance to the zoo. No. What, what you're doing is you're really supporting the conservation work we're doing at the zoo. Yeah. Um, tickets are available at LG Pharmacy in Camalote, at Pets Place Veterinary, Veterinary Clinic in San Ignacio, and Corker's Restaurant and Wine Bar in Belmopan. Okay. The, the second event is a uh, jungle romantic getaway at the tropical education center uh, the price for that is 320 dollars belize per couple mm -hmm. it includes uh, your dinner your breakfast the belize zoo at night experience a guided tour of the belize zoo the following day and access to our trails on the tropical education center and mm -hmm. the pool on the tropical education center compound is there limited space available? Yes, we have limited space for uh, the romantic jungle escape. And so um, we're asking people if they're interested to get in contact with us as soon as possible. All right. Those don't sound like zoo animals in the background, though. No, they're not. Sorry. <laughs> those, are, those are urban animals. We know those well. Yeah. 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 All right. And just one more question. So you said that uh, when you look at the animals and their behavior, they're used to a continuous flow of people every single day. Have you seen any changes since they're seeing less people? Uh, we don't want to make a conclusion on that yet, but yes, the animals in the zoo are used to people, um, especially uh, the jaguars, the tapirs, the monkeys. I mean, we get, in, in normal times, pre-COVID, we were getting about 78,000 visitors annually, which half of that were Belizeans. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing I can tell you that the Belizeans that go to the zoo really appreciate their wildlife. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the, there's a lot of interaction between the animals and, um, and the visitors. And the animals do miss seeing the public. It's especially the social group, you know, I mean, yeah. They're used to people, uh, they've become what we call habituated, basically. Yes. Used to us. And, and that is the reason why some of these animals that, that we we rescue cannot be released back into the wild, especially the problem cats, because they become habituated to people and, and then they no longer fear people. So if they go back into the wild, they might look up to people for food and, and other resources. And so it's safe that we keep them 
and use them as educational ambassadors at the Billy Zoo. Yeah. All right. Well, that's another reason why people need to go to the zoo, because the animals miss us. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. yeah <laughs> also, it's 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 all the conservation work we do yeah. at the zoo. This zoo is more than just the zoo. We have social programs with the communities we work with. I mean, we have the staff that we have to provide for, mm -hmm. and then of course the animals. So it's more than just the zoo. It's go it goes beyond what you see when you visit the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center. Yeah, and I was gonna say, and the education center itself, and the research that you guys do. Right. All right, Salso, so thank you so much for telling us all about uh, the fundraising efforts that you have so people know how they can support. The raffle will be drawn next Friday, so people need to get those tickets. And the romantic getaway is for the Valentine weekend coming up next weekend. And it definitely is a unique opportunity to see the animals after dark. It is. And, and thanks, Marlene and Gavin, for having us. All right. Thank you, too. And um, that is all the time we have for this segment. So we're going to take another short break. And when we come back, we are going to have our wrap up. So please stay tuned.